Welcome in, everybody, to another great day here on The Replay. I'm your host, Jabril Rashad, where we're trying to make your day. And coming to the stage, you know, I got my hitters with me. I got my man, Daryl Alexander, as well as Tim Action Jackson. Good evening, fellas. How y'all doing this evening, my brothers? All good, all good. Blessed and oh, grateful, man. you know it, all day, every day. Yeah, man, absolutely gr glad to be back for another week. You know, we took uh, Monday off, decided to do it on Tuesday, because last night, uh, we had a chance to witness that uh, college national championship game, which we're going to get to in just a minute. But before we do anything, y'all know what I need for y'all to do for us. Hit that subscribe, like, and share button as well as the notification button because we're still growing the channel. So, guys, let's get into this thing, man. We saw last night the national championship. They repeated UConn Huskies down the Purdue Boilermakers. And, you know, I put my – uh. I'm glad I put my uh my winners in, man, before we actually got started. Cause I I text our DA and let him know this is before it actually started. Now it actually yes. started. So, and then it's always the but. <laughs> but they can <laughs> but don't be surprised. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I got it in though. I was letting them know, man. I did I had to put a but in there because I kind of thought. Honestly, I thought it would be a better play game. It kind of got boring to me, man. I mean, uh, Purdue, you know, I think um, when you look at this game overall, it just came down to guard play, backcourt play. I think at one time they said, you come, man, um, they they backcourt, they guards had like, it was like 49 to 14 where they outscored Purdue guards. You know, the big fella, he had 37 points, 10 rebounds, two block shots. And yet he said that uh, – you know, he, he didn't he didn't feel like he gave a, his full effort for whatever reason. This is the national championship game. So I don't know what else he could have done. But uh, but let's get into this thing, man. Uh, again, um, UConn have repeat they are repeat champions. Um, they won the game, you know, 75 to 60. And we're going to show a little bit of highlight. But before we do that, I want to get your take on the team. I come to you first this evening. What you thought about the game last night? You know, uh, it, it was funny. I, I picked Connecticut last week, so I, I picked them the last show. I already had picked Connecticut because uh, I picked them after after Houston lost. Connecticut was the best team to me, so um, I had Connecticut going going to win this game. But I did have this 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 you know kind of like what you was thinking about for it to do. You know, I knew the big man, and if they hit their threes, you know, they, they you know th uh, threw the ball down to him, and if he passed it back out and hit their threes, they be you know they be on. And they started off the game that way. They started off the game that way. He was down low doing his thing, posting up, passing the ball back out. Boom, they was hitting their threes. They had their lead. Oh, it was all fool's gold because them guards started to, start to get up on them guys. Now them guys can't hit those threes. They let him eat. Eat yeah. with even, yeah. right? Yeah. But hey, them guards yeah. said, no, nah, y'all not going to eat no more, though. That's the end yeah. of that. Because they had, like you said before, when you just start this uh, out in this conversation, uh, usually in the NCAA tournament, Guards dictate that those wins. That's the way the game is played in the college game. Guards usually dictate who wins the championship. You got great guard play, you usually win the championship. Those are the teams that win. Now, of course, there's some caveats every once in a while. You got a big man and you got a guard, you know, that works together because that's a tandem deal going on. But right, right. when you got as many guards as Connecticut got, and they had a 7-2 big man to actually, you know, where they didn't have to really double team him, like right. He wasn't, he wasn't going to be like he's going to make every shot. He wasn't, couldn't be this efficient. So he kept him out of pain. He made him work hard. So right. that, that, to me, kind of helped them as well, too. Right. That was all said. Well, D.A., what you think, man? You saw it. You saw it in the flesh, man. Well, not in the flesh, not like you were there, but you saw the <laughs> <Yeah>. game, man. <laughs> what did you, how did you uh, surmise this game? What you thought? I thought um, before the game, I, I said um, to an, in another group that, the big man would – I know Edie was the was probably the better big man, but I thought that they would equalize each other more than any of the other teams because they didn't have anybody near that height that could even, you know, bump with him one-on-one -on -one or, you know, put a hand in his face, so to speak. You know, he wasn't ever looking eye-to-eye -eye with anybody. So last night I thought would be the closest to where – 
okay, he could battle him a little bit. So then I, I said, UConn's other players are better than Purdue's other players. So that's why I lean toward Purdue. And I think I think really think the turning point was Did you mean did you mean to say Purdue? You mean Connecticut? I Connecticut had the better of the yeah. other players. That's what I meant to say. But I think the turning point, man, was that Edie went cold, you know, at the end of that first half and that second half starting up. He went cold. He went like 0 for 7 or 0 for 6 or 7 or something. I think that was a turning point. And then when they put that other long brother in there, he got that dunk on one side and then he came back and got that dunk on the other side. It was like, wait a minute, what's going on? Like he energized them a little bit and gave them a little, a, a little yeah. run, gave the other guy time to rest. And I think that part of the game was a turning point. After that, they couldn't handle those UConn guards. Let's see that. I think that play, we might have that play. Let's see some of the highlights. You know, I could say it, uh, you know, uh, uh, Dan Hurley, man, did a, did a wonderful job, man. Um, I think this is the dunk you're probably talking about somewhere from here. This is Newton right here. That is right there. That's the dunk. Yeah, he hit, he hit him on both sides, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that was sweet. Yeah. He energized him a little bit, even though he didn't play a whole bunch of minutes. It was just those little, you know, those minutes of quality. Yeah, he gave him he gave him quality minutes. You're right, yeah. he gave him quality minutes. And Newton, man, I mean, he ran that point, man. Like, you know, he finished with 20 points, man. He was so he smooth, was like unbothered the whole game. Yeah, the way he was able to control the tempo. Yeah, man, he, he was just unbothered. Like, I, I went with melanin on that. My the the, the, <laughs> the coin toss for me was who got the most melanin. That's who I want. <laughs> <laughs> and you know one thing I like about Hurley, and y'all hear me talk about it all the time. <laughs> Football, basketball, y'all always hear me whine about this. Coaching, he actually, you know, you see more of that in the NCAA than you do other sports, but he actually coaches, you know, some, some right. coaches are out there, but they're coaching, but he actually is coaching like details, the whole game. He's always just coaching. And you'd be surprised. Sometimes coaches don't coach. They just kind of out there. Well, you know, that's a family business. Yeah. You know, that's a family business of Hurley's man. And uh, he seems to be his interaction with the kids. Of course, his son, I mean, it's nothing like, being able to coach your son, man, you know, to play for his mm -hmm. last year and what have you. But he seemed like he has a real good rapport with his athletes too, man, yeah. with his team. And I like how they kind of feed off of one another. But yeah. he's definitely an X and O type of coach. You can you can tell that. And uh, yeah. he has a lot of <laughs> kind of uh, jovialness, jokingness about himself, with, yeah. which relates to the kids, you know. Yeah, Kid, <laughs> kids will let you coach them hard if you connect to them. You know, you can connect right. and still right. coach them hard. A lot of coaches – don't quite connect and they try to coach him hard and it's like button heads and it doesn't really work out a lot. But you can tell his kids allowed them to coach, coach them, allowed him to coach them. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you all this though. Uh, now they haven't been a back-to-back um, -back champion, man, in the uh, college men basketball since uh, Florida did, of course, back in, two, in the mid 2000, 2006, 2007, somewhere in there. Do y'all think that, Based upon you know the team that they put together, y'all think uh, UConn could make another run, man, and come back and win three in a row? Had been done in quite some time. I don't think that's been done probably since UCLA. Exactly, I totally agree with you. Actually, uh, they're favorite. Uh, they're the, the, the one and two favorite actually to win a championship next year. And the great thing in they're, they're doing though is that the guys are coming back, so they have uh, continuity, you know what I'm saying? So the guys are actually connecting and actually help you back with each other. And then the good thing about that, you're talking about Hurley. Hurley is actually putting in so many different types of zone defenses and things like that. And his guys know that game really well. He's doing a good job of interchanging his guys. His guys know his system. And they've been in it for a little while. So he has an advantage. He's kind of like what we've been doing like in the, with the girls' uh, 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 game because they've been having people play for two and three years. His guys are playing two and three years and stuff like that. So, and some four and five. So he got guys who continue. He got guys on the bench who actually know the game as well, too, who are staying and not going to the transfer portal. They staying with his team. They like what he's doing and connecting with him, like you guys said before, about how connection with the coach and the family and all that goes together. And so he has, uh, right now, he, he's the top of the program right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I think, uh, you know, and I'll be honest with you, I, 
I forgot they actually won it last year. I really did. I forgot they had won it last year. They were talking about they had, you know, back-to-back champion. I'm like, you kind of did win that last year. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but now, you know, well, I guess we can just, you know, toss this in there because y'all know that uh, John Calipari, man, and he's taking over at Arkansas. So do y'all think that's a great move? I mean, because they're looking at, uh, there is a question mark, whether or not if Dan, if uh, Hurley's going to go over there to Kentucky, you know, they've been throwing that around. So what y'all think about that? DA? Um, I think I think it's uh even though Calipari could have ridden his own ticket with Kentucky, I think it's I think it's time for him to, to move on. And yeah, do change a, is good. Yeah, he I mean he does a he does a good job of I mean it depends on what side of the argument you're on. He does a good job getting those guys to the league. You know, he's got a whole boatload of first round draft picks. So if 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 you're c- coming there and with the thought of I need to get to the NBA as soon as possible. He's mm-hmm. your man. But as far as championships, he would do better, I think, to you know, if if he if he wasn't pushing one and done so hard, Kentucky would have been better, you know, a lot of these years. But he's not, he's not, he's not in the business of keeping those guys together to get a championship. He's bringing them in, he's getting them ready. Hey, I think you're ready to go to the pro pros. So you go. So that's what I think. Yeah, I um, um, I think the only way he's going to be successful at uh, Arkansas is that he doesn't do the one and done like you right. talked about. Is right. that he actually those guys stay like we talked about with Hurdle? They stayed in a little bit longer, and maybe he felt like Kentucky the atmosphere just was one and done. And he couldn't change it. He couldn't get his guys to do anything else. He couldn't recruit differently. So maybe he gives him opportunity because of the pressures of the uh, maybe the alum. He may have the pressures of the alum there in Kentucky, and he may want to get away from get away from that. So it's probably a backstory to this that we're gonna find out later. Had to do with the alumni, and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. You know, the whole social president and elite of the of the university that want to win all the time and get the best players. And he's like, hey, I need to get away from that so actually I can cultivate something for a change, right? And the thing, same thing actually with Hurley. Hurley said they asked him that question right after when he was winning, right after he won the championship. And he's like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, I'm staying here. You know, that's kind of what he said. But you know, things can change. Folks can yeah, change. Money, hey man, right? money talks everything yeah, else. Yeah, walk. money talks. You know he said his mind with money. Yeah. yeah, yeah, money talks everything else. Walk. Well, we'll see, man. I mean, I think uh, he knows X's and O's, man. He got a good roster coming back. If he do stay, I definitely wouldn't count him out. Uh, uh, as far as uh, trying to, you know, three peat and be the first team to do it, and I know probably that I could think of, I guess, like I say, since UCLA, and that would have been a long time ago. So, so we'll see what happens, man. But let's go ahead and segue over, man, to and talk about these women, the women college basketball. D, I know you like what you saw last night, man. I mean, across the board, man. Let's get into these highlights real quick, man. Early on, these girls came out, hour came out, like they was just, I mean, they was ready, man. They was absolutely ready. And um, I don't think you I'm, I'm gonna start it back from the beginning, but I don't think you could have you could have had a better start than the way our came out the box. I mean, right. Caitlin Clark, man, she had like 18 points in the first quarter, which was a record. But then she only finished with 30. You know, the stars yeah. came out. You see uh Jalen Hurt out there. But she was draining threes, man. She was being, you know, she was being Caitlin. And 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 the thing that I like though that Don Staley did, Don Staley, she made adjustments. She did what Kim Mokey didn't do. Right. Ooh. She did what Kim Mokey didn't what do. What you say? What you say? Huh? <laughs> yeah, she made adjustments, man. Yeah, they bumped her. You know, you know, she loved to go left as they was talking about going left and pulling up. But Don had something for that, man. It was kind of like the opposite to uh Yukon, you think about it. She was gonna let other people beat her. You know, but yeah. Caitlin Clark, she put a she she put a pin in that. She said, "No, nah, this is not gonna happen." Because I was wondering what was the uh, the young lady uh, Marshall, who was kind of like her uh, her running mate. She scored and had a good game against LSU, but she was like a she was she was nowhere in sight. But DA, what you think? What you saw? What you think about this game, man? Man, I wa- I watched um, just about every Iowa game, and. The only team that didn't make adjustments or put any pressure on her was LSU. And I've actually come to a conclusion that Kim Mulkey was okay with allowing Caitlin Clark them to beat to beat them. 
Uh, I know a lot of people don't won't think that's true, but I'm like, I'm telling you, she's you got a little conspiracy. Like, man, I'm thinking she was cool with them. <laughs> she made zero little... adjustments. But the all the other teams, even though they tried, I mean, even though they didn't have the athletes that that uh, LSU may have had or or um, South Carolina had, had, they did try. Even UConn, UConn made her work, man. I watched that entire game uh, Friday night, and UConn was – they were doubling her. She got some points, but they were tough points. And, yeah, and yeah, they, yeah. You know, they almost pulled it out. But, you know, you at uh, South Carolina, they got the – they got the – they got the athletes at just about every position to where there were several, several of those girls who could D her up and then they would get the help, you know, if she went by or something like that. But a lot of times she didn't get by. It was that first person, like against LSU, she was by that, that first girl, like every time, like easy, nobody to help. But against South Carolina, whoever was around her, if it was like a break or something, they, they could stick with her. I think the girl, if I'm not mistaken, the girl Johnson is the one that she waved off last year. I don't know if y'all remember last year. She That's was standing out of the uh -huh. court and she yep. just kind of waved off like, yes. oh, there ain't no thing. She ain't going to shoot it. But I was so glad to see that girl in her defensive stand get low and ripped her. You remember when yeah. she ripped Kaylin Clark? Yep. She yep. just kind of like this makeup like that. Yeah, you did that last year. But yeah. I'm gonna make sure I get up in you this game. And she ripped yeah. the stole and went out for a layup, man. The I knew to her. once they settled down, they was they was gonna you know put you know put some you know put a run together. You yeah. know they did. It was a complete team effort against them, man. Like South Carolina just have some girls that can ball. Like that that freshman, I forget her name, who oh yeah, who lit them up from <laughs> everywhere. That's just it's, like you know. Oh, that's, yeah, them two freshmen. Everybody yeah. have oh, that little little. Little. Yeah, that, oh that one God. is really athletic. You know, the athletic one, the one that can drive to the basket. Yeah, do, that's that's like, she got she a Nigerian last like name. Like you know what I'm saying? She was, she yeah. was creative with the ball. She could actually go from one side to the yeah. other. And her quickness was on Man. another level than the mother girl. I, I, yeah. I can't wait to see that one keep growing up. And mm -hmm. she learned to shoot as well, too. To go along with that athleticism she has, she going to be something special. Yeah. Woo! That girl right there, she's yeah, a girl man. South Carolina got a luxury note. Most most teams don't they don't yeah. get to enjoy it. like they can yeah. beat you from anywhere. Oh, so I got I got to ask you guys this question then, right quick, because with this win, I think that gives Don Staley three national championships on a record. So the question is now is is Don Staley on Mount Rushmore as it relates to so I'm just super proud of college coaches and women basketball. You got the Tennessee coach uh, who was there for yeah, Pat, You're talking about Pat Summon, uh, uh, yeah. college women, uh, all time leading uh, winner. You got Connecticut, Connecticut coach. Yep. You got Gino. Gino. Yep, Gino. Gino. And then you, who else do y'all think? I'm um, thinking. Um, well, you could say Forte, but she always coached the, uh, the the ladies' national team. So I don't think you probably want to count that. Moki is going to be on it. Kia Moki, you think? Yeah, I think she's gonna be on it. So if you gonna put Kim Mulkey, then then Don, and because she didn't get her championships now, she's actually if she's yeah. not oh, there, yeah. she's, I think she's up there. I think Don she's up there. Definitely on there. She's, definitely, yeah. she's number four. Yes, she's on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think I think Don. Which is three and four years. Yep, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. hands down. Matter of fact, I already know she she gonna be fighting for some of the stuff. But you know, Connecticut got a real strong pushing uh, push, but Tennessee did it for a long time. Who's UCLA's uh, coach? Uh, when it was the championships, you talking about in the women's basketball? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not. See, I don't know either. So that tells me she ain't on there. Yeah, I can't. So, I can't. So, so, I whoever know. was, but they winning championship for a while. So, because uh, they they had a number of different people, Alpha, Alpha Miller and some other people. But I would I would, I would take those four coaches we just mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah. Her Pat Summit, Gino, Gino, uh, uh, Armani, Ariana. Yeah. Um. I've always had a problem. You know, he's Italian. I always have a problem pronouncing his last names. Sorry, Gino, if you listen to the, to the replay. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I think I would have to definitely put uh, Don Staley, man, up on my. Oh yeah, much yeah. More. And she she's gonna she's gonna be near the top before it's all said and done. Because I can't see, I can't see some of the top athletic women 
coming out of high school, not even you in college, not wanting to be a part of that. Yeah, and, and the whole atmosphere that she actually, her culture that she actually created of unity around it. And she's also said to them, say, you, you'll come here. Now they're talking about her like Dean Smith. Like the only person who could, who could slow uh, uh, Jordan down, give him 25 points was Dean Smith, right? Yeah, so right, the same right, thing right. kind of going with her. She got all these guys, these players, players, these girls, all these players and ladies who actually can score more than what they're doing. Yeah. But they play team basketball yeah. and they fine with coming in in, in uh, droves and in, in different roles coming it, in. It's like a I, McDonald's all American right? team. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like, like I, an you know, team. coming in, you, you do this group, then you bring in another group, they come in in droves and just like crushing people. So cause that second wave, because I, I call our star and it actually produced as well too. I call it fool's go. Yeah, because <laughs> so, everybody, everybody came out looking real good, you know. I know everybody's kind of like, Whoa, look at our right. And then bam, that fools go. Yep. <laughs> they just came and took it away from them, right? So yep. uh that that was it was interesting though. It was a very interesting game, and it was good to see somebody use strategy and be very strategic in what they was doing for a change against Al. Well, like I said, when you look at and not just counting the championships, um, but if you're looking at winning percentages, I know within the past uh you know, eight, nine years, Don is right there, you know, and I, I, I agree with DA definitely. Uh, when it's all said and done, I think if she if she stayed, if she wants to still have that passion, which seems like she, you know, she does, if she still have that passion, I think uh, to coach, I think uh, when it's all said and done, she's going to definitely, I think, uh, supplant uh, Pat Summers record, or right? she's going to be very, very close to it. You know, I mean, she's averaging about probably 25 wins every season. You can book it, you know. So it's gonna it's gonna be real interesting, man. But 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 kind of turning the page, I had another question I need to ask regarding Don Staley because uh, this kind of caught me off guard a little bit. But we got to talk about it, guy, because I was on. <laughs> I made me share with y'all, man. I had a couple of posts today. Why? I mean, you know, I was just making an observation. I was critiquing this particular comment that she made, but it was it was regarding. Men, transgenders playing in um, women's sports. If you're a woman, you should play. If you consider yourself a woman or, and you want to play sports or, or vice versa, you should be able to play. That's, that's my opinion. You want me to go deeper? Do you, do you think... Uh, transgender women should be able to participate. That, that, that's the question you want me to ask. I mean, you want to ask, so I'll, I'll give you that. Yes. Yes. So now the barnstorm of people are going to flood my timeline and be a distraction to me on one of the biggest uh, days of, of, of our game. And I'm okay with that. I really am. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna come to you first on this, uh, Tim, and I need to know. Ooh. I need to know. To transgender men, men, be in women college sports. They sure know how to actually create a distraction, a distraction of separation. Mm -hmm. That 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 shouldn't even been brought up on this this day, but somebody wanted to do it to distract. But okay. Well, well let me distract. give you a little backdrop. Yeah. Let me give, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you, you, let me give you a little backdrop. They say the individual who asked the question wasn't doing so well at the newspaper that he reports for, or whatever. So he had to take a chance, you know, to sensationalize the question for Don, so he can get his uh his, his ratings with the uh with the with the company that he works for. So, but go ahead though. <laughs> That's perfect. Just the, just what I was talking about. Exactly what I'm saying. But I will say this: they should be playing basketball if they want to play basketball. They should play. They should play with the natural born, uh, where he was born in. Whatever he was naturally born is where they should play. I'm not gonna say anything more than that. I don't need to say anything more than that. Whatever he was naturally born at, that's where you should play. Simple. Any other thing is a disadvantage or an advantage. Right. And that's what sports is about. It's about creating your dad from your natural ability. You taking your natural ability and creating an advantage from that, actually showing how you can actually grow and become better at what you are naturally. That's what right. that's my answer to that. Well, DA, let me come to you. <laughs> let, me, 
Let me call I don't want to cuss on. I, I cussed in my head. I, I already I already used profanity in my head so it don't come out on the show. But H E double hockey sticks, no, no transvestite should be man should be performing in any sport against any other natural women, like period. Like we shouldn't even be having still having these discussions. And I was so disappointed in her in her answer. Like you can't talk about God, God, or God, 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 and then say, yeah, yeah, tr transvestite should be. No, I just don't think that goes together. It may not make sense what I'm saying, but I'm saying <laughs> you, you can't, be, you can't, be, can't be pushing God that hard and then turn around and say, yeah, let's let the transvestite play the men play against the women. That's just not, no. <laughs> it just, it's just you saying it like that. It's just a, it don't it don't it don't go together. It don't fit. It don't fit. Show, yeah, it don't it, it don't fit. And I was trying to share some stuff uh, based on a few conversations that I had. I'm trying to pull it up because uh, I had to chime in on it, man. Because again, as I told one individual, I said uh, that, sh that, that that the response to me was a uh, emotional unstable uh, response, and I also said that. Kind of like what you what you're talking about, um, because they questioned, you know, I guess my, and I, I wish I could put it up so I could give you the whole, the whole conversation of what. what and what and I had the part the part that's the part that's that's tricky is, people gotta gotta remember you're not talking about sexuality. Like we ain't even talking about who you sleep with. We don't care. We're actually right. talking about a gender change like no you're not a woman so you can't compete against women that's so simple to me who cares about if you're gay or not that's that's about you know your sexuality who you sleep with you're talking about people actually saying god made me wrong i'm supposed to be this i'm supposed to be that like are you trying to basically tell me the millions and millions of transvestites or they're, they're basically saying, God, you got it wrong this many times. If you really right. think about it, that's that's what we're saying. You got it wrong way too many times. Like I wasn't supposed to be a boy. I was supposed to have this this uh you know this genitalia, right. and that's just not true. It's not even fair for you to even think like that. And we got to start like being just as strong and vocal as they are about God made me wrong as God made you right. Like. I think God is right. Right. Well, but for me, it's, well, like well, I said, TJ, it's real simple. What, what you naturally born is what you are. That's what you're supposed to play as. That's right. Yeah, simple. I, I don't make it complex. You, you can go all, they can go all around a circle and come right back to that single point. What were you born as? Okay, I'm well, done. Well, good evening, the pizza. She definitely agreed. That's the, that's the, that, that, that's the queen, Alexander. She's joining us again this season. Again, welcome in, pizza. So she definitely agreed with with us both, with us all, man, regarding this particular topic. Because again, I was kind of bantering back and forth regarding this. And I, again, I, I think that when she made that response, it just didn't go together. That was an emotional statement that she made and it's led by irrational thinking. You're not rational when you say that, because like you said, DA, on one hand, you know, you, you're saying God, 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 but do you know what God actually created when he created the, uh, the human species? He created us male and female. So for you to alter whatever it is that God has made you into, and then you want to jump over here in this jurisdiction and say, hey, I want to go play with the, with the women now because I deem myself to be with me, a, a woman. Now that don't change the, the situation because there's still testosterone and things of that nature. And I know they get the hormonal shots and all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. So no, if my daughter was in sports, I wouldn't want to have a guy who considered himself to be other than what God has created him down there bumping and, and, and you know what I'm saying, airborne or whatever the case it just makes be. It just makes no sense. Like, it makes no sense well, whatsoever. He's going to be I naturally probably... stronger and has a, he has a possibility to be naturally faster, stronger with all of that because of how he's naturally born. We are. Yeah. That's the that's that's come in with this argument, well, uh, there's there's some equality uh, that goes on. No, we, we can be there could, you know, I'm trying to think of that word. If there's equity, you know, equal equity, or you want to call it something like that, but not equality, we're not made the same. Right. So we don't have babies. 
and they don't have our physical strength and potential and all that kind of stuff. You can have some strong women, but they ain't strong as men can be. Right. So it's real simple. They can't, they're not as fast as men can be. And then and all these other things we can go on and um, uh, with that. So why would I want, like you just said, my daughter competing against somebody who has a natural propensity to be actually stronger and faster than her in a competition, and I want to call it fair. Right, not- right, right. How can you call it fair? Because it's not fair. You, you hit the nail on the head, Tim. I mean, if you're going to say that we're in a racial equality across the board, then that seems like there should be some kind of a, a, a call it a pantheon or some type of chronological order that we're supposed to be having. Because males are not females and females are not men. And and, and it's just like the old saying go, you know, if a if a if a if a dog tail is a leg, how many how many legs do we have? If you if you call his tail a leg, right? Mm-hmm. He still have four legs. It doesn't matter what you call the dog, what you call the tail, it's still right. four legs. So right. again, you have no support. That's the biggest thing. You have no support for uh, this type of behavior other than the fact that that's your world. You're in that world. That's really what it boils down to. She's in that world. Yes. And you're trying to be politically correct. And like you always hear me say, I'd rather be God correct. See, that's where I draw the line in the dirt. Does anyone know if she's Brand. ever if she's ever addressed this issue before that question came up publicly? Did she ever address it? Has she ever addressed that before yesterday or the other day? Because I'm curious as the did she think at that moment she had to be, you know, politically correct, or has has she stated before in the past that trans trans men should be able to uh, compete? I don't know, DA. I don't know if I would have heard it by now. I think. Yeah, what I'm. I don't know if she was actually asked that question specifically. But I do know she was coming in about, you know, when they was talking about they were stereotyping some of her players and she was talking about uh, her team. And I didn't get I'll be honest with you. I didn't watch the entire interview. So I don't know if it came up then. But I don't think that she that she has simply because prior to her even starting to answer the question, she was talking about, oh, well, you trying to get deep on me. You know, it was kind of like the question caught her off guard. So I think yeah. that was the first time that she was asked that question. Man, I would have answered that question so boldly and loud and who let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. yeah. She, the funny thing about it is that she's not going to have any players that are in that butch call. So she's not protecting the player. Right. So she don't have any players like right. that. So right. she's protecting that community, though. Right. So that's the whole thing about that. I think it has more to do with that community, not a particular player, anybody that's on a team. She's protecting that community because she don't want the community harm, but she don't realize that like you said, it's about God. If she's about God, and actually, you, it's not about protection of community. It's about about living in the truth. Yeah, and I think I the think truth more than actually worry about protecting some. Right. Uh, I think that community group. should be its own separate. I think it has a separate lead for them. You right? No, no, I <laughs> I didn't mean like that. But I mean, <laughs> oh, I was going to say they can have their own lead. That's it, DA. No, <laughs> DA. No, no man, I just, I just came up with something. Game. I wasn't even trying to. They can have their own support system. Hey, I'm gonna tell you something though. I, I let you finish that right quick, Dave. But 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 I'm gonna tell you what I, you know, just like when they got their own voters block, you know, they went out and got their own voters block, right? That's not too far fetched. But go ahead, DA. Yeah, man. I mean, come to think of it, yeah. So so go and let all the men who think they women play against each other and all, and then you back you back to some equilibrium, you know. But I was thinking. Right. They shouldn't even be part of the LGBTQ. Like, I think that's something totally even different from that. Like, it, it's on a whole nother le- level than anything because it it just it just goes against the just the basic down to the DNA back to creation. Okay, like God is saying. Y'all, y'all will be able to do whatever you want to do on this planet. Whatever you want to do, you got free will. But this is a male and this is a female. And now you can go and sin however you want to. It, it should never be a, no, I'm not a male. He he was wrong. I'm, it should never be that. So that's why I think they should have their own separate from the other movements. Because that's a whole nother beast. You know, dealing oh, with that. D, I know you. I, I know you brought up uh, Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade, 
they try. <laughs> Say, man, ain't that crazy? Like a child, man. That's a child. I gotta. Well, you know, you know, I gotta, I got, I gotta show, I gotta show with my brothers, man. You know, I was in the. Like I said earlier, man, I was in the uh, in the baddest case going against these. I will say at the end of the day, I'm looking at my I'm looking at the, the remarks of the responses to what was going on with this particular chat that we was having. And uh, I got way more likes and thumbs up and smiles. But I'll share a little bit with y'all when this subject came up. I started out just simply saying uh, that I agree because of the WNBA player that came out. I don't know if y'all know that. Uh, WNBA NBA player came out and said, no, nah, this is this is crazy, you know, basically. Uh, but I said I agree with the WNBA player. I said, uh, and I can't believe South Carolina coach Don Staley would disagree. Right. But then again, when a, when a person's when a person themselves is spiritually and emotionally unstable, what do you expect? Now, somebody responded to what I said. Uh, they turned around and said, I believe if you are a male at birth. You should not be allowed to play with girls or women, period, right? That's the first right. part of it. But then they went on to say, but they telling me now, but you are way off. <laughs> Listen to this, but you are way off. And I'm uh, wrong for insinuating that Coach Staley is spiritually and emotionally unstable. I knew they was coming to you for that. Yeah, me too. Okay, but hold on, though. But hold on, though. Uh, they say to me, Jabril, with your comment, you appear to be the one who is spiritually and emotionally unstable. You know, I love this. This is this is what I do. I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, polemic when it comes to this, the art of disputation, if you will. So when they responded, I said, okay, next step back. Because I had addressed somebody before. I said, okay, next step back. Once again, another person standing on shaky ground. I'm very secure and stable in my thinking. You want to gloss over the fact that Coach Staley supports the LGBTQ community? Because that's her word. Yes, this makes her emotionally unstable when dealing with more and social issues, in my es estimation. Again, Coach Staley wasn't being rational when she made that statement. She led by her feelings or her emotions. That attempts to undermine the plan of God. Most high. Now, if you're also in your feelings, I'm speaking to the person responding. Now, if you're also in your feelings because you refuse to pick a side as it relates to this spiritual and material matters, then just say that. But you can't straddle the fence. So what's it going to so what's it going to be, Alan? God or P Diddy party? Please tell us. Inquiry minds want to know. So I got a bunch of emojis. I got a bunch of emojis laughing, you know, at the same thing. Because the first guy, I, I, I told him, I said, "Oh, oh, you mad, huh?" So I get, I, I go, I got into him. After that, I ain't had no more problems. <laughs> I ain't had no more problems after I respond to that. But again, Man, pick a side. Pick a side. Either you want to be pick a side. Either you want to be with God, or you want to be on this side over here. If you want to do things that are morally and 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 socially uh, upright. Or you want to go to the PD department? Just pick a side. That's all we have. Jabril, Jabril, we we live in an era where if you're if you're totally passionate about something that's just right or wrong, people will come for you. Like this is this is the non uh, accountability era we live in. Nobody wants to be accountable for any everything. And some people, like with your statement, they don't have an argument. For the other side but it's just that your statement was so strong that they're gonna just some people are just like that they don't even have an original thought they'll wait till somebody else has a thought and they'll say okay i want to be against this and then uh, they'll just they'll just come out against it without a real argument like nobody had a real argument for what you were saying like it wasn't wrong it's just that people don't want to hear like we're so we're so we're so uh we stargate, we stargazed, we like enter entertainers, rappers, athletes. People have a big problem going against the grain a lot of times when it comes to them. You know, Don Staley, she's a black woman. They just won a championship. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this statement right. she made. Forget the fact that they just won a national championship. Forget the fact that this is Don Staley. She's a she's a woman making a comment. So we gotta 
but people don't want to think like that. They want to just be like, that's Don Staley. I can't believe he said something bad about a black woman. I'm telling you that that's the yeah. era that we live in. Yeah, I certainly agree with that, D.A., because uh, and, and I didn't get a chance to get to the, the first comment, but I made a comment about that. I, this is no personal attack on Don, the human being, on Don, the basketball coach. What I'm attacking is her thinking as it relates to this particular topic. Yes. That's it. Yes. In fact, See, that's I like logic. Don Staley, that's the logic. basketball coach. I like Don Staley when she played the game because she was one heck of a player. But that doesn't mean that I have to sit up here and agree right. with everything that she says because she's a basketball coach. Right. No, no, no. That's not how it works. This is way bigger than you, Don. That's how we got here. That's, yeah, how, that's we how we got, got here. here. Absolutely. That's exactly how we got here. And, and, and know, the key, so the key, I'm, I'm sorry, the key word actually was emotional that you actually mentioned. She was emotional, not in her logical thinking, because she actually wasn't following anything that she actually proclaimed to actually believe in, right? Because you said it from the top. She says, God, this is God, that. I'm not, I won't be afraid of mentioning God. I'll keep mentioning God, she says. Right, okay? right. I'll I keep saw mentioning that, yeah. God, and that's on his platform. I'll keep mentioning, and you can keep coming for me, but I'm going to keep mentioning God. Yeah, you're mentioning God, but how are you seeing this situation in God? So what happened is this. We don't know actually how, what her thought is, what her spiritual actual direction is. That's the whole key. And with that, she shows that actually she's not, you know, her, her, her thing is all commerce type of a spirituality, I guess. I'm not sure what it is. But with that, it, there's no line in hers. And she actually is not, like you said, she's sitting on a fence instead of actually taking a position. So she take a position and say, hey, I'll speak about God, but I ain't taking a position on what it means to follow God. And that's the whole situation. She does not defining who and what she is in her journey with God. She's just saying God. And then that don't actually have an impact if you're just saying God. Right. When you got a chance to actually stand on something and then you sit on the fence. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And that, that, that really, uh, uh, that comes along when an individual are not that uh, in depth with scripture. You know, she's yeah. in depth with drawing up plays and basketball and so forth and so on. So when you get a question like that out of left field, you're not prepared. Ain't prepared. You know what I'm saying? You're not, not prepared, prepared to respond she was directly. was in that box. So, so that's why she said later on, if you listen to a quote that she was talking about later on, she made a comment regarding if she have said it this way. She tried to get, it was a horrible, to me, it was a horrible example, but I give her, I give her A for effort for trying but, she, but now that she said it, she couldn't change her position. And that was the thing I did. It's okay to repent. It's okay to turn around. It's I'm okay to say, you, can repent. you know what I'm saying? Nobody's going to hold, hold you. Now reflected on it. Go ahead, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but my, the thing is, you put it out there in the atmosphere. You put it out there in the universe. And rather if you get into your quiet moment, your own peaceful uh, dwellings or whatever the case may be, and you repent that way, that's fine with me. But one thing I do know, and I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm a I've said this uh so many times that in order for evil to prevail, good people do nothing. So to not attack that statement on the merit, then for me, I wouldn't be worth my salt and justified in my uh, uh understanding of what I believe is 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 the scripture and what God has intended for mankind. So that's why I had to uh, address it on social media, yeah. and I did that. So I definitely discharged my duty, and I and I'm unapologetic for that, <laughs> you know. So, but what what I'm gonna do? Because since we on this and we talking about God, I was actually gonna go to the professional ranks, but something occurred yesterday, guys. We're gonna segue. Something occurred yesterday that had it had 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 all, had all the people just about in America caught their attention, right? And we're going to talk about this solar eclipse and get into some of the symbolism and the wisdom of the solar, solar eclipse. Because what does that mean? Now, if you deal with science, and I love science too, science definitely have, have a place. Uh, rational sciences, not what they call uh, 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 pluralism. Because when you start studying different sciences, like a Stephen Hawkins who passed on and so forth, you'll start getting into a whole different other realm of study. Uh, I'm not a dog, a dog with guy. I'm not dog with the Big Bang Theory. We understand in our faith that simply means kung fa kung be and it is. When God simply want to do something, it's nothing for him to do that. So yesterday, everybody was looking up in the sky. So let's let's take a look at this.
And this was actually in Dallas. Now, before we get into this here, let me let me speak on this right quick, and then I'm going to let you guys go. You know, when you see something like this, it is definitely a phenomenon, right? I mean, it is a great, this won't happen again, as y'all already know, uh, another 20 years. But here's the thing that I look, I thought about, you hear the, you know, the, the scream and so forth for joy. Everybody was jovial when they saw it. But I thought to myself, I said, um, what if the sun would have failed after the moon passed through. Say, say, say. Hold on. I'm, let, 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 me, let, me, yeah. let me touch on this right quick. Yeah. If the sun would have failed, what kind of screams and horrors would you would have heard then, right? And so I begin to ask myself, what are the signs and the symbols of these two things that you're looking at, the sun and the moon? Now, before I go any further, let me play another clip right quick. And I was glad to hear Stephen A. say this. All two. Oh, and, and, and my eyes ain't hurting and stuff like that. You're not supposed to wear those glasses when you're watching the solar eclipse. You're supposed to wear those glasses. You're not supposed to peek through the, you know, peek off, off of the glasses and look at it because your eyes can get damaged. Damn it, I lied. I tried to peek a little bit, but I couldn't take much of it. But I had the glasses on for the most part, as y'all just saw. And it was fascinating, I must confess. It was fascinating. Mother Nature, the power, the, the Lord. I know science is science and all of that stuff. But to believe there's no Lord above. But some of the atheists out there, more power to you. I believe in a higher power, and I just saw an example of it. It was a beautiful experience for me. I hope it was for all of y'all, too. Okay. Let me just share something with y'all, and I'll let y'all chime in just a second. Now, this happened at the time of Muhammad the Prophet, over 1,445 years ago. And when this happened, it was a great phenomenon. And what they went and did, he was so nervous when it happened that he went and prayed. He called all of the believers in to pray, to make these prayers. They thought in a, what they call in, 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 in Islamic history, it was called Jahaliyyah, which is the, the days of ignorance. This was prior to... Allah commissioned him to be the last final messenger prophet to all of mankind, bestowing the Holy Quran upon it over a 23-year period. So when this happened in the days of ignorance, they thought it was due to somebody either dying or somebody being born. So when he was commissioned to be the prophet, he corrected that. He said, no, it has nothing to do with death or dying. It has something to do with a possible punishment but it also has to do with man realigning himself, a woman realigning herself with God, with nature's creator. If you notice that in the in the uh, solar system, our solar system, the planets, they line up. So if you look at the symbols behind the sun and the moon, the moon is blocking out the sun. Whatever well, represents light. You got soft light and you got big light. God is getting our attention. People are looking up in the sky. He's getting our attention. So it's really to tell us that we have to line up like the planets line up. We have to line up and we have to reassess and reevaluate on where we are in this journey that we call life. So that's his mercy. The mercy extends to all people. See, there's a position. We come out of prayer, which is called Ruku, and we come up and we say, Sami Allahu Huli Manhemi Death. Simply means that God hears everyone's prayer. Not just our prayer, but everyone's prayer. So when you understand this, this is a phenomenal thing that is happening. Some people meditate, some people pause, some people just reflect. This is about cogitation. This is about pondering. And this is what we do as Muslims. We make a prayer called Al-Kusuf. Al-Kusuf is like, 
It's like uh, two rock eyes, but it's four prostrations within two rock eyes, what we call single, a rock eye is a single unit. So this is such a powerful mo movement that you cannot take for granted. You got to get the signs and the symbols out of what just occurred on yesterday. Because if you don't, you're going to still suffer. You're going to still suffer uh, intellectually. Uh, you're going to be oppressed intellectually because the concept of, of, of your belief or why you even was ever even born. And if you're not asking those questions, why was I even born? Why was I ever even created? You don't understand what the human destiny is. Then you, you're really cheating yourself and you're cheating yourself before you check out his life. Because I can promise you that you're not going to be here. There is another existence in this whole uh, uh, zone. So I'll leave on this. Uh, uh, in the time of Muhammad the prophet, they wanted him to stop preaching the one God concept. And he told them this. If you were to place the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand, never will I stop teaching the word of God. Think about that for a second. The sun in my right hand and the moon in my left. So he's talking to the higher up, the higher up uh, pagan Arabs who didn't believe in God. They had all these different gods. But these are rational sciences. Like I said, this is big light. The sun is big light. The moon is soft light. These are the rational sciences of the world that God gives the science to this. So again, this phenomenon, I just had to, and it's a lot more I can go into that, but I just had to put that out there because it's very important that people understand what occurred yesterday that may not happen to another 20 years as far as them projecting. Those of us that's in the third and fourth quarter of life really need to get understanding. And of course, we know the angel of death don't have a day off. Death has no, it takes no day out and it definitely don't discriminate. So again, that's my uh, take on that. So DA, I'm going to come to you right quick on that, man. What was your whole thoughts about that great uh, occurrence of this eclipse on yesterday? Man, I went through several phases when it comes to how I felt about it. Because even before, even before the eclipse, I almost made a post and I and I screenshotted it. I deleted it and I screenshotted it. <laughs> and my this post was saying, Lord, if you if you if you want to block the sun and just leave it that way, I'm okay with that. Like I'm prepared. Like we 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 we've really we've messed this like we've messed this world up to where we need a reset. Like if if that would have been the the end for all of us, I was cool with it. You know, I had my son with me. I was like, okay, that's all I could ask for. So that's right. and, I, I, and I I typed it out. And I said, no, I don't know if they ready for this, right. but right. I, I know I was ready. But uh, right. he, see, my son was out of school for this. So I said, OK, I got to participate. They let him out of school for it. And I told him about it before we went out, We went outside. I said, man, we're going to go watch the eclipse. He's like, what is that? I say the sun is going to be out and then the moon is going to come in front of the sun and and block the light out. And it's going to get dark for a little bit. He said, like nighttime. I'm like, yep. And then it's going to keep passing. And then the sun is gonna come back out. So I didn't want to. I thought it was gonna be cloudy too because I didn't have glasses or anything. So I said I'm gonna mm -hmm. put my phone out there facing the sun, and I put it on time lapse where it'll just record. And then when I hit play, it'll just go and it won't make you wait, you know, thirty minutes or whatever. It was just go through that the video I sent y'all. So when it got a little. When it got dark enough for us to kind of check it out without having to stare, I brought him out. He was looking up. He was like, oh, that's cool. And I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, that's that's nice. And he's like, yeah, you know, he's playing around in the yard. He's like, it's dark outside. So it was like, but at that point, as the sun was blocked, I was like, man, wow. this is way deeper than I could have ever imagined. I'm like, it makes you think. Like this is it's there's there's some, some higher <laughs> like this is a CBA you know, scene. yeah like I and I was thinking man eclipse okay if I see it I do if I don't that's cool too but I was like it it, it took me to another place man I was like this is this is awesome this is some powerful stuff we're witnessing and it, I saw a lot of people on social media saying the same thing they were like you know I took this eclipse eclipse lightly but when I witnessed it. You know, it changed some things. It changed the way people thought. It, it changed the way I thought about just, I was like, this is some real, this is was, real. This is real. Like, this ain't no, this is real. God is real. 
before you go, Tim, let me say this. I was so glad, brother, that, you know, we were still in the month of Ramadan fasting because it don't happen like that. And I was able to make prayer. I didn't really get a chance to see it because as soon as it comes in, we got to make the two, the two, uh, what we call rock eye, the two units of prayer. So I was glad. But here's something, D.A. and Tim, I want you to think about. Tim, you can go right after this right here. Don't you know this? I don't know if y'all saw this. But the science, the, it used to be the biggest telescope they had was uh, Hubble, right? Now they have the, uh, the, uh, the James Webb uh, uh, telescope. What they've, what they've seen, this came out about maybe a few weeks back, uh, maybe about a month ago or so. They said they were looking up where the sun, the sun that we see with our physical eyes. And what they've come to learn now is that it's another sun. And it's in the existence of this sun, it's like in the metaverse, it's so far in distance. Yeah, it blew them away. But there's mm -hmm. a verse in the Quran, there's a verse that talks about the Sultan. Allah God challenges man to come out into the universe. There's a challenge. If y'all recall years ago, it was years ago, they had a shuttle that went up from, from NASA in Houston that blew up. And on the side of that, on that uh uh, shuttle, it said it was called the challenger. Remember this the challenger. Whenever you use the is a definite article, meaning that it's been established. And if you write on side of this spaceship, the challenger, who are you challenging? That's like the time of the people in Babylon when they built the towers up to try to see if they was going to reach God, and God struck it down, right? According to the scriptures. So you build a spacecraft and then you call it the challenger, not a challenger, the challenger. But you didn't get God's permission. And this is the verse in the Quran that it talks about this. You know, he say, travel out into the zones as though you are sultan. Yeah, God wants you to be, he wants you to look at his He said, that when you cast your eyes the first time, they will come back. And then he say, cast your vision again two times. He said, when it come back the second time, it's going to dazzle you. you. You just ain't going to believe what's out there in creation. What's out there in creation. So it's like I agree with Stephen A. said, Hey, to the atheists, good luck with that, buddy. And I tell y'all this, those people who are believers and people of faith, I always tell people, no matter what you practice, be sincere with it. I said, because you're going to be held accountable on what you said, what your marriage saw. I said, but take out some spiritual insurance. Even if you're not the best believer, the best one who practices, you got any doubt, take out some spiritual insurance. Why do we take out insurance? We don't take out insurance after the accident. We take it out before, just in case we have an accident. So those who believe, if we're in the grounds, it don't matter. If I'm in the ground and then it didn't go my way, what I thought. But see, there's a flip side to that coin. What if you wrong, Mr. Atheist? What if you wrong, Miss Atheist? See, they don't ever look at the flip side of that. You know what I mean? So yes, take out you some spiritual insurance. I always say that, man. But anyway, Tim, I want to come to you and get your uh, view on it. Well, let me take you down a little journey, a little story. I woke up that morning and actually I started uh, doing something that actually I've been doing for a while. And actually, I actually uh, conversed with my brother and we were conversing and going back and forth because we actually we digging in on, on some goals and some and some vision that we've seen. Right. And so in, in doing that and, and digging and grinding and, and in that grind and been that grind for a while. So we talk about bigger picture of our grind. And that was the whole beautiful thing about that conversation. We're talking about the bigger picture, what it's for, for the legacy that we're leaving and for the children actually coming forth. And so in that, as I'm digging, I'm going through and I'm, I'm driving, get some stuff done. I was like, hey, you know what? I need to exercise. I need to for help. And uh, I was like, you know, and you need to, you know, start doing that on a regular. Right. I'm telling myself, I say, OK, I say, yeah, they got the eclipse. I wasn't even really thinking that much about the eclipse. I've seen it before and I've seen it on TV. So I'm like, OK, cool. So I walk out the house and then I walk over to the, my, my water park, right? As I'm walking down, I'm going to exercise. And so I'm coming out, bring my camera and have my earphones, and I'm going I'm to I'm check it out while I'm doing it. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to get some exercise in, you know. So it's go, you know, oh, it's going to be a total deal, you know, whatever. I check out the thing, you know, get a little exercise in. So I'm walking back and forth, and all these people had come over, and they actually had, had made pallets 
and, and you know, had little socks and they had these special cameras out. And so I was just walking along and, and I greeted people as we were going along. I said, ah, it's a beautiful day, perfect day for this to happen. It's a little overcast where we were, right? So it's an overcast and all that kind of stuff. So I have, have photos of the overcast and I'm walking back and forth. Now, and I, I walked up to so now, I took some pictures when they actually looked like the Apple, right? The Apple phone, they had a little bite out of the Apple, had a little bite. And I looked at it, so I took a picture, kept on going. I had shade. I didn't need no special glasses. People had special glasses. You know, we got melanin in our eyes. Actually, you don't look directly at the sun when it's at its brightest. Right. That's not when you right. look at it. It's actually when it's shaded down. You can look at it and it's no problem. So that's what I would do. And I would have my shades on, so it was no problem when I was doing that as well. So I walked uh, there and walked on back. Boom. I walked for uh, about an hour, an hour and five minutes, and this whole process was going along, right? Took that, took that, that moon to cover up the sun a whole hour. And, you know, um, I like what you said before, Jabril, but I like to say a little bit different. I'm talking about the, the big light and the reflective light, which is the moon. It's reflected from the sun. So it's reflective light. So in that, I start to reflect on this walk and this journey. And I'm thinking about the journey that we're walking on and the journey that we're going through and the bigger mission we have actually bring out you know, all the hopelessness of this, of this time and this period of going on in life right now where, you know, people are not agreeing. The things that you said earlier, DA, about how the people don't want to take accountability, right? And so I'm thinking about on this journey, how do we get people to take accountability? You know, where do we get them to actually see what the true mission about, about life? And because the book starts with you. It starts with you. It ends with you. It's nobody else. You are your own journey. And then that journey, we interdependent upon each other. So I'm, I'm reflecting on this kind of things that I'm going through. And then at the perfect time, I walked in the area that I thought would be perfect, right? As it was going in, it started to slowly cover. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, watching, I'm watching it. And then a uh, <clears throat> dog is barking over here. And the lady says, hey, he's OK. You know, it's an Asian lady. Because it was all cultures in, around the lake, as a matter of fact. So all the cultures you can think of. It was Indian. There was Asian. There was Caucasian. It, it, was, it was black. It, it was Hispanic. All around the lake when I was walking. And I agreed almost uh, everyone. And so now I'm looking at this, and I'm taking uh, uh, photos um, as well, and I'm looking at this, and then it, it goes in. I said, oh, that is beautiful, right? And, and you see the little the, the light around the outside edges of it, right, in the circle. And then as it was coming back, it took an hour and 15 minutes. When it was coming back, and not, I don't know how many people saw this, there was a cross in the middle of this thing for me. A cross in the yeah. middle of that as it comes to light, and then it turns into a star. I captured the star. I have to send you guys the picture. I captured just when it kind of came to a star and it moved off, but the camera didn't really catch what I saw. It did not catch the things that I right. seen where I saw it. Yeah. It was so beautiful when I saw that cross in the middle of it and it moved to that. And then, like to me, it was that 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 the journey to have it. And I, I kind of looked at it like this. Okay, we just finished from the winter. At the winter, everything dies, right? Everything actually really not die. It actually goes in the soil to actually to nurture things. So actually, you actually go in, you nurture everything, kind of like the bamboo tree, right? You nurture, you go in, you, you, you put everything that's needed, all the water. All, it's been raining like crazy, right? So it's been nurturing everything. So what we've been doing in life, we actually nurturing everything. We're actually preparing and getting everything ready. Next, boom, for those who believe there's a resurrection, right? Beginning and the end, or or resurrection, or a new life, right? <clears throat> or renewed life, right? So you can think from that standpoint. And then you see the covering of the moon to reflect it, for you to reflect, to pray, to actually be one with our universe, right? And with God. And so at that time, when that changed back out, it took an hour and 15 minutes for that thing to cover up, as I was watching from the apple part, to that thing only took about 45 seconds to clear it and light back in. So that was a symbol to me that said, God says, hey, no matter how long it takes, you may work all this time, but I can bring you light instantly, right? All of a sudden, everything you've been working for will happen like it didn't take a number of day, a second, right? Mm. You're going to work hard, you're going to get you prepared. And if you do this, if you prepare properly, you won't have to have this moment again, because then you'll be prepared for the light that I'm bringing to your life. So yeah. the light is coming. Here's the light. Are you ready for the light? If you're ready for the light, you don't have to go through this again because I got you. You got prepared. I prepared you. And actually you did the works. So mm -hmm. I was like, that's that's what I saw. And I felt in my heart and in my spirit. that Hey, here's the light. Are you ready? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'll say this before we have to end on this segment uh, uh, here, uh, because I, the two scriptures that we adhere to. 
Uh, one is from, it was called Eunice, but it's really Jonas. You would know in the English language as Jonas. But God says in this particular uh, surah or chapter of the Quran, when he says, it is he who made the sun a shiny thing and the moon as a light and measured out for its stages that you might know the number of years and the reckoning. Allah did not create this, but in truth, he explains the signs in detail for people who have knowledge. That's one of the chapters. The other chapter is, this is from uh, Fusilat. It's the 41st chapter of the Quran. And it says, and from among his signs are the night and the day and the sun and the moon. Prostrate yourselves not to the sun or to the moon, but prostrate yourselves to God who created them if you really worship him. That's beautiful. And that's why I say people are looking up in the sky and some people there because they just, they, you know, they just looking at the, the science aspect of it. But who is causing that to happen? That's the whole thing. Who is causing that to happen? So, guys, I wish we could stay on this in, uh, much longer, but we got to turn real quick to the pros right quick and talk about, man, our Dallas Mavericks, man, and what they did on Sunday, man. So proud of these boys, man. They came back uh, being, uh, you know, 12 and 14 down, forced overtime. And I want to ask you guys right now, we're sitting in the fifth seed, man. We're looking at a series against the Los Angeles Clippers if everything go accordingly. But I want to ask you guys, who do you like? Our duo, or their, or, or, or the, if we play the Clippers, are they duoing Paul George and Kawhi Leonard? But I want to, before you answer that, let me give y'all a little bit of highlights of these boys right here going to work. This is Luka, nothing but Luka and Kyrie against the Rockets. This one is for 48 and 37, right? Yeah. Kyrie dropped 48 and Luca had 37. Oof. And I'm talking about, man, this is exactly what Luca needed uh, in Kyrie when he comes off the court, man. Um, and, you know, Houston was playing for their playoff live. They were trying to get into that, get into the tournament, man. Mm -hmm. um, but Dallas, man, they had, they know, they had court. But I don't think, man, it's another, to me, it's another duo out there. I could be a little biased or whatever, but I'm just looking at what my eyes are looking at. The way they're playing right now, I don't think there's another a better tandem out there that's playing the way Luka and uh, Kyrie have really gelled together. Especially consistently. And he, and he, just, he just took over, man. He just took over. <laughs> okay. He divided those guys with that finger roll. In the tree, yeah, yeah. So, 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 DA, I'll come to you first on this. What do you think, man? If we match up with uh, LA Clippers, man, who who you like? I know you like Kyrie, but you're not really a Mavericks guy, but uh, we, we'll go ahead and I'm all in, man. Like, he's a you're Maverick, all in. Man. Okay. I'm all in. Okay. Yeah. okay, when he leaves, I'm all out, but as long as he's there, I'm, I'm all in. Um, <laughs> say, I um. This, My man, <laughs> this is easy, Jabril, Tim. This is easy for me. I'm not a I'm not a James Harden fan. I'm not a, a Westbrook fan. I think the Mavericks can. I think the Mavericks will, will. I don't think the Clippers will be a problem. Um, it's it is not going to be lopsided because if you got a healthy Kawhi and a healthy George, that's a that's just a, a dynamic duo in any way you look at it. Um, the thing is, will you get a healthy George and, and uh, Kawhi? I don't think so. But yeah. even yeah. if we did, even if we did, I think, I think the Mavericks understand now that there is no team in the league that can stop Luka and can stop Kyrie. Nobody can stop them. No matter what you have, they have an answer there there's no you can't there's no defense you can say okay we're going to play this defense no there's no defense for either of them they can they either one of them get their shot at will they can drive they can shoot a three so there's no there's no defense for them the only thing you could hope for against the mavericks is an off night or an injury other than that 
You just got to try to ask on because you can't stop those dudes. You can't stop either one of them if they don't want you to. Well, you know what? They talking about P.J. Washington, which we talked about uh, Daniel Gafford. I mean, what he mean in the middle, you know, lively. Yeah, they, they have a real team now. Yeah, yeah. Li lively haven't played the last few weeks. Uh, Josh Green been out. But they're saying that P.J. Washington is, I think he's putting up like nine threes per game. And he's going to be able to get that the way they're trying to play Luka and, 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 and uh, Kyrie. So if he can just be catch ready to shoot. I really believe, man, and he hit no three. That is going to be a problem. They're going to be a hard out. They're going to be a very hard out. If they continue to be live around the rim, man, yes. playing, you know, you know, blocking shots and rebounding the way they've been rebounding. It's a health they're issue. Gonna, they're going to be a hard out. Stay healthy, and, they, and I, I don't think, you know, they're going to be hard to beat if they're healthy. I don't, I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, speaking about P.J. Washington, he actually had an off night tonight. And they still dominated still Charlotte. Won by yeah. 16. yeah, they still dominated Charlotte. He had an off night. He still got them shots up though, them threes that you just said. So he got yeah. up those shots, those number of shots. He just was off. He missed almost all of them. But, but um, um, I would say, you know, his defense though, it, it don't fall to them long arms he got, the way he played, right. the way he hustled, how he's bought in him and Gafford, and then you, um, um, the way you know that unit has side to bun, the way they bunded. Right. And the way that dynamic duo has bonded, you know, look coming off the court, you know, holding each other. I said he was exhausted to come back against Houston because they've been playing all these games right in a row. They got a back to back tomorrow. So yeah, right. they've been playing a lot of games to be winning like this. That right there should actually, that's going to pull these guys together so much to know that no matter what's going on, no matter how tired they are, they know they can galvanize and they should, they should, they can actually they have the internal fortitude to win no matter what the circumstance is because they, they've met some things now. So they've been through some some stuff already. They've been playing playoff basketball for a while. And they right. had some troubles when they got together and had to kind of glue together because when they, they went on the winning streak, then they went on the losing streak, right? And so then they had to come together actually get through that because people's like, okay, yeah, they're not what I think. And their defense is what people is not really paying attention to. Their defense right. has come top. It was top 10, but I would say lately it's even better than that. The last five, seven, eight games, they've been probably top five. Oh, we've been playing – yeah, they've yeah. been playing, they definitely been playing a whole lot better on defensive end. Hey, real quick, uh, for those of y'all who are just coming on, join us or been on whatever, please hit that like, subscribe, and, and uh, share button uh, for us and that notification. This is the replay where we'll continue to try to make your day with this content that we're, that we're putting out. I'm your host, Jabril Rashad, with my co-host, Daryl Alexander the Great, as well as my man, Tim Action Jackson. Yeah, but we're talking about, in the final segment of this, uh, this particular episode, we're talking about the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, possibly matching up with the Los Angeles Clippers, and I like our duo. I definitely like our chances, and uh, I think we're going to be a hard out. Whoever we wind up playing, I really believe that uh, the Mavericks can. They have. They're going to have a lot to say about it. A lot to say about it. So let's get the final words on on, on these Mavericks, man. Uh, uh, Da and Tim, I'll come to you right quick. Uh, Da. So uh, I guess I uh, I don't know if I got your your answer regarding the best duo right now. So are you saying that's who you think? I mean, it's not. Giannis and, and 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 dimes over there in the oh, east. No, that no, that duo ain't that duo ain't clicking. It's 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 Kyrie and Luca, man. Hands down. Kyrie, okay. What you got on the team? No, oh, I got Kyrie and Luca too. You know, the second best would be if they was healthy, would be uh um Denver duo, uh Murray and um right. <clears throat> yeah, we can't, so that, well, we that's can't. the second because they just won a championship. That's how that's why I give them to them and actually yeah, that's yeah. A, that would make a tick, even though they got that, you know, that porter who actually helps a whole lot because he's a unique uh knife, you know, he slices and and hits those three from the outside, but it's those two. Yeah. Well, it's a consensus. Me. Yeah. It's a, it's we, we're talking right now. Yeah, we're talking right now. It's definitely it's, so. It's, so it's, a, it's a consensus. I'm going to go with Luca. Like I said before, him and Kyrie, I think they're doing their thing. So this is it, guys. We're going to wrap this up, man. We got to get these shouts out, man. I don't know if y'all thought about who's going to shout out, but I got a shout out. I definitely got a shout out, man. God bless me this week, man. We did the showcase and uh, brought out some young fellas, man. I want to give y'all a little bit of of uh, what we was able to do. But you want to feel a complete corner, man. But in the scheme, they're going to tell you to play off. They're going to play, tell you to play man press. Right now, we're playing off. If you trust your back pedal, trust, trust what you're being coached to do. You got to buy into it. I'm telling this for your own good. Say, man, what you doing? In the future, you got to buy into what the coach is saying. If you don't, you're going to find yourself on the outside looking in. 
You out here right now, you're not even trusting yourself. Go get yourself a job. That's why you cheat on the government. Good job, man. Because when you're weaving, we ain't even got to talking about weaving yet. How to weave, weave. Now, I'm doing this at the age I am. Listen to what I'm saying. If I'm playing seven off, I don't care which other lineman I do. If I play them on the outside of the show, if I play them in the middle, if I play them on the inside, I'm, I'm gonna trust my discipline. So if I'm down, in, listen, if I'm down in my back pedal, left foot up, this is my drive foot. I am not raising this foot up. I'm seeing too many of you guys do this. Cause you ain't trusting yourself. You do this first, then you try to back pedal. Do this here. And then come out. Now you're on your tiptoe. Wherever he go, I don't you can go with it. You can jump any route. You won't get beat on the out and up. Just trust me. Now the reason why I was a little bit tough on that, <laughs> DA, I showed you the team earlier, because one of the young guys, he got beat on the out and up. So I guess it embarrassed him because you got the people on the side over there. Y'all can see if there's other people over there. We went one-on-one -on -one with the receivers. So now he, he's upset to my man, why we can't press, why we can't get up on him. I had to show him, give him some tough love because that's not what the coach is asking you to do. You got to be, if you're going to play this, you got to have a sharp memory if you're going to play this position. I said, if a coach is asking you to play seven off, play seven off. If he's asking you to be in press coverage, be in press coverage, or you will find yourself on the outside looking in. So, that was, that was about we was doing that with uh, Student Athlete Count. I gave a big shout out to Sports Business Institute, man, uh, sports uh, cert certification. Of course, I am Student Athlete and the replay. And they wanted to send this to y'all, guys. I am Student Athlete. Watch the replay. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd be out there, man. Watch the replay. Yeah, I thought I'd be out. So, right. so that's gonna be my shout out for this evening, man. I thought I'd give y'all some love on that. Watch the replay, cause we are the replay where we try to make the day. But, 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 Dig, I'm gonna come to you. Who you shouting out, my brother? Man, I'm shouting out Jabril, man. <laughs> I'm now, shouting I'll take out Jabril. I'll take I'll take the love, Faith. man. Hood, man, I hood. just love to see coaching. Like, I'm a coach by nature, I think. And I love to see. And, and see, I don't know nothing about that. I don't play. I watch a lot of football. That's why I like to hear y'all talk about, you know, the details of it all. You know, your back foot and your playing foot. I'm like, man, what is that? What is You know, I, I like to hear about that kind of stuff because I'm like, okay, they ain't just out there just running and – like they actually have techniques that us just who don't play it, we don't know nothing about it. That's why whenever I hear it and I see it, I get like, like ready to go. I'm like, man, now I want to watch some football so I can watch the cornerback, you know, to watch his technique. Whenever I hear y'all talk about that, that's why I be telling y'all, man, send me some footage. I be wanting to like, like, yeah. Watch. Let me share, let me share this with you real quick. My 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 seventeen year old son was the camera guy, so he's holding the camera. And he come up to me later on. He said, Dad, he said, I didn't, I didn't know what y'all do. I yeah. said, I'm going to tell you something. I remember, God rest his soul, Ricky Dixon. And uh, I remember when he first came back to Oklahoma. And we used to have these conversations. And it was like, he and I was like, like really in sync. Because he was saying, and I remember him saying this, that when he got to Oklahoma, just like when I got to UTEP, I'm going to be honest with you, man, all I was doing was running around. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't know. We didn't know like 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 schemes and coverages and the numbers and you know when we was at playing ball at Hutch it was just a matter of you heard sky you heard cloud but to understand exactly where you supposed to be man we didn't get that until we got to the next level so yeah man you yeah. can relate to that man it's always different levels to it man it's always mm -hmm. different coaching that's why I would love to discharge my duty and let the kids know whatever scheme that you that you're gonna play in in the future. Because I told them, I said, it may change. A coach may want you to play in this way or that way or whatever the case may be. I said, whatever the scheme is, you still have to stick to the principles of it, though, of that position. Because there are principles to it. Now, how you execute it, the terminology that's going to be used, well, that's up to the defensive coordinator. But there are certain things that you're going to hear. The same thing I told Tayshawn Gibson when was little. I don't care what you say. You're going to hear cover one, cover two, cover three. Zone covers, man covers, and it does not change. They may scheme it differently. They may call it something differently, but it's the basic fundamentals to whatever it is you're trying to uh, to play, whatever that defense is. So 
That's why I had to get a shout out, man. Big, big shout outs, man, because we did a wonderful job with the parents. I even talked to the parents, which hadn't even been done. And got some feedback from them. They were so happy, man. And and and, and so you know, you know, they, they had great reviews and great comments and the whole nine yards. Hey, real quick, Tim, before you give your shout out, man, we're gonna give a shout out to Sherry, man. She's joining us late, but she be hustling, man. She be hustling. Hey, What's shout going out to on, Sherry? Sherry? Man. She's speaking to everybody saying, Hey, y'all, we had a great time, great show. Y'all make sure y'all go back and watch this because it was a great conversation. Uh, we got real deep on the eclipse and everything, man. I appreciate your comments, man, on that. Tim, go ahead and give your shouts out, though, man, real quick. Yeah, you know, when I first was thinking about it, I was going to have a shout out for, for the Mavericks, for their for they journey, how they actually come together and galvanize together. But then I also wanted to shout out to my brother for actually what he did this weekend and how he pulled those kids and those parents and actually pulled them together and galvanized. You know, and it made me think about this because this is where, my, where it came to me all together is that, hey, are you ready for the light? For those who are actually ready for the light, hey, there's a shout out to you. For those who are not ready, get ready, okay? Because the light can come and get you at any moment, at any time. So do the work, be prepared, and get ready for the light. Absolutely. I agree with that, my brother. Absolutely, man. I just hope people don't, uh, I'm going to say faith people, faith-based people, believers in a, in, a, in a higher power. Yesterday was a phenomenal thing that happened, man. I hope people don't take it for granted. And assume that you're going to be here another 20 years to see the next one that comes around because nothing's guaranteed. Take what we talked about this evening, meditate on it, cogitate on it, ponder on it, whatever you got to do, and think about your own life. Do your own self-evaluation. Take self-inventory of your own self and then just continue to line yourself up. We're not perfect, but we can strive to be perfect in the imperfectness, if that makes sense. Okay, so just line yourself up. And when you fall short, just reset because God is often forgiven, but yet he's most merciful. So I always know that. So, guys, I can't tell you, man, that this has been a great show, man. Great conversation, man. We're going to be back again, God willing, on Thursday. Uh, if don't nothing else change, I don't think we got any more uh, games coming up. I know the playoff, the NBA is right around the corner. So we will uh, try to. Uh, oh, by the way, we got to get I got to I got to let uh, Brook know this, too, because y'all know the NFL draft is coming up. Uh, I got to I got to say this right quick before we get off there. Uh, D.A., y'all try to steal Detroit Lions tight end, but Detroit matched his offer, and I saw that, too. <laughs> he ain't saying no. We hadn't talked about it, but we'll talk about it. We got the NFL draft coming up, man. So, again, man, I want to thank everybody that came on and joined us, man. Uh, this has been a wonderful show, wonderful evening. Don't for forget, again, to hit that subscribe, like, and share button. And that notification button, in the words of my brother, D.A., don't forget, forget to hit that notification button and tell a friend to tell a friend because we are still growing the channel. And, uh, guys, I'm going to be doing a no, another channel, new channel in the future. I'll let y'all know real soon here. Uh, I won't give it all away, but just letting y'all know we're going to be talking about the spiritual more than anything uh, when we do this here, okay? So, again, I want y'all to have a wonderful evening. I want y'all to have a, 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 a blessed night. And always, always, as I love to say, always keep God first. To God be the glory. Good night, y'all. Good night.